Have you ever stayed in a bad relationship for way too long? Have you ever fought with a person in a relationship? Have you ever had that feeling inside of you that said, I need to leave this person, but you made the decision to stay even longer? <laughs> well, we're about to have a heart to heart, all right? A woman to woman right now, because I'm telling you that it is so imperative that you advocate for yourself. You are a loved person. You are a wanted person. And even if you think that that relationship is so important to your life, it's not more important than your life. And that's why in this video, we are gonna be talking all about how you can take more safety precautions, how you can prepare yourself more, and how you can be cognizant and make better decisions in your dating life, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're just dating and meeting someone, even if you're in a situationship, okay? You still have to take care of yourself. So let's get into this video. A lot of times you hear people think that domestic violence has to do just with a physical altercation that you may have with an intimate partner. That is not true. That does not cover the depths of domestic violence. So I'm gonna give you all a definition. Domestic violence is a pattern of abuse behavior in any relationship that is used by one partner to gain or maintain power or control over another intimate partner. Domestic violence can be physical, sexual, emotional, economic, psychological, or technological actions or threats of actions or other patterns of coercive behavior that influence another person within an intimate partner relationship. This includes any behaviors that intimidate, manipulate, humiliate, isolate, frighten, terrorize, coerce, threaten, blame, hurt, injure, or wound someone. Y'all, that was like a, a mouthful, okay? So the main things that I wanna focus on in this video are us having a real understanding when we walk away from this video of the severity of domestic violence and also some strategies for how we can actually take care of ourselves and make sure that we're being more careful in the relationships that we currently have and the relationships that we're gonna have in the future when we're out here trying to date and meet these people. You know what I'm saying? Because there's nothing wrong with dating and getting to know someone. But what is wrong is when we're doing it recklessly. I am going to give you all some background statistics and I'm gonna give some overall statistics about domestic violence, but I'm also gonna hone in on some statistics that specifically impacts African-American women because I'm an African-American woman and the rates of domestic violence within the African-American community have been on the rise. There is a woman that has a channel. Her name is Leah Gordon and she has Black Girl News. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with it, but if you're not, you definitely need to check out that channel because she is constantly reporting on the atrocities that are happening to women around the country. So now I want us to discuss accountability. Accountability is so important when it comes to dating because instead of us coming from the perspective of this person did something to me, the first thing we need to do is be proactive about the decisions that we're making and how we're allowing people to treat us. So the first thing that I think that we can focus on when we think about accountability is not letting your guard down. Um, and when I say not letting your guard down, that means that you're not overlooking situations and signs. Sometimes we see signs from people, right? We hear them on the phone hollering and screaming at their baby mama. And we're like, oh no, you know, she just gets on his nerves or, you know, that sort of thing. No, a man should not be disrespecting anybody around you, okay? A man should be in control of his emotions. A man should know how to speak to someone even when he's upset in order to convey where he's coming from. So we have to pay attention to those things. And if you see a man calling another woman out of her name, disrespecting another woman, whether that's his ex-wife, his child's mother, then he could potentially do those same things to you. 
Maybe he hasn't done them yet, but that doesn't mean that he would never do that to you. So don't just think like, oh, well, I'm special, you know, Tyrone only says that to his baby mama. You know she get on his nerves. Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, Tyrone is ignorant and you just haven't had a chance to see that ignorant side. But trust and believe you push him a little bit to the left and that ignorant side is going to 100% come out. It just hasn't happened yet. The other thing is that if a man is hollering at you, yelling at you, that is still abuse. A lot of times we've put abuse into this box that only has to do with physical abuse. No, that's emotional and psychological abuse. And that is not to be overlooked. When somebody treats you badly, walk away. Understand that there are other men out there. I know y'all, there are other men out there, okay? You have got to really believe within yourself that you're okay with or without a man, but that you're not gonna stay in a situation just so you can say, oh, I have somebody. This statistic comes from the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. One in four women and one in nine men experience severe intimate partner physical violence. Intimate partner contact, sexual violence, or intimate partner stalking with impacts such as injury, fearfulness, post-traumatic stress disorder, use of victim services, contraction of sexually transmitted diseases, etc. And I think that that is just such a powerful statistic because like one in four, one in four, that's crazy. All of us probably have someone that's in our family or someone that's close to us, a friend who has experienced a domestic violence situation. And a lot of times we don't even know that this person has gone through this because so many people are being really quiet about their suffering. And I'm definitely going to discuss this a little bit later in the video. My next tip when it comes to accountability is research who you're dating. Okay, you should absolutely research the person that you're dating. And no, I'm not talking about going through every post on his mother or his child's mother's social media. That's crazy, okay? I'm talking about looking and seeing if the things that he's telling you are aligned. Check out if he has a LinkedIn. Like he says he's a professional and he has such and such business. Check out his LinkedIn. Is it up to date? Do you see that he has these type of connections? If he's not a person that's active on LinkedIn, does he have a business website that you can actually look at? Um, you can definitely look at Google, put someone's name and information in there and see what comes up but you could also get a background check. If you're thinking about being in a serious relationship with someone, if you're even just going in isolated circumstances with the person or isolated places, you need to know who this person is. There's nothing wrong with doing that because all you're doing is protecting yourself and knowing who the person really is that you're bringing into your life. And hopefully they're running one on you as well. Another thing that you could definitely do is there's an app called True People Search. Um, you can use that app to actually look up a person based on their telephone number, uh, based on their name, I think. I don't know if date of birth, they have several different things, but you can research that person and it will at least give you some information about previous places is where maybe they've lived. Also people who they're associated with, there's nothing wrong with you going and getting that information. Now, if you start pulling up on these different addresses and stuff, hey, need no, Nia did not tell you to do that, all right? That's crazy, okay? You're just simply fact checking is what we're gonna call it, okay? Fact check the brother, that's all you need to do. Something that it's so important for us to remember is that you can accept an apology, but not the person. Meaning, if someone treats you badly, you can say, yes, I accept the fact that you are apologizing to me, that you are saying that you did something wrong. Because understand that a lot of abusers are very, very quick to later on come back and say, oh baby, I'm so sorry. I never should have done that to you. You know how much I love you. I love you more than anybody else. Nobody will love you the way that that I love you. No, you can accept the fact that this person wants to apologize, but that doesn't mean that you accept that person. That doesn't mean that you ingratiate that person back into your life. That doesn't mean that you keep that person around. You still have to be able to say, okay, thank you. I appreciate the apology and good riddance, like peace out. Like you are for someone else, but you are not for me. Another tip for you is that if you plan to leave someone, okay, 
This is a big one. I don't know why women continuously say to a man, I'm going to leave you. I'm leaving on Thursday. I'm taking the kids and you're never going to see us again. Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> like you don't need to tell him, keep it to yourself. Okay. And I'm not trying to say this in a preachy type of way. I'm just saying like, seriously, this can really, really help you. Like if you're planning to leave someone, then what you need to do is get your ducks in a row and don't let that person know. Do the move when the person is gone, when they're not at the home, like any other time. Or if you have to do it when the person is there, make sure that you have three to four other people on site who are there with you. You can also call the police and let them know that you're going to be moving out and what the circumstances are. There are um, resources that are out here to help you, but you have to actually utilize those resources. But what you don't need to do is let that man know exactly the date and time in which you're leaving. Because what do they do? The people who are super, super crazy, the murderers out here, the killers out here. Oh, I'm going to get her before she goes. Okay. You're not going to leave me. You won't have a life without me, but you've already let him know exactly what you're doing. So please be so careful about telling someone what your intentions are and what you're planning to do. Once you move, make sure that you're moving into an undisclosed location, okay? Make sure that no one knows where you are besides like your close family and maybe don't even tell mutual friends. People that you both know don't need to know where you're actually living because it could slip out. That person could have your address in their phone. They're hanging out with this individual. They leave their phone there. The person picks up the phone. They access the information. Now they know where you're located. Another tip of advice is that once you've actually moved out of the home, if you do have children with this person, then you all should meet at the police station for your exchanges of your children. The other thing is I have read about several situations where children have been killed by their father um, after the relationship has ended because they're so upset about the divorce. So if you have an inkling that something could happen to your child, please get a protective order immediately. Please get a lawyer. Please go to the courts. Please do something, hotline this person so that you are not putting your child in a dangerous predicament and ultimately, it's not your fault if something happens to them because the father is supposed to still protect their child. But I know how I would be if that was my kid going somewhere with someone that I don't even feel safe with. It's not going to happen. Like I'm going to have to figure out a way so that my child doesn't have to go there. So definitely, I'm not an attorney. Please consult a lawyer or a child's advocate so that you can get more information on how to protect your children. Another thing to do is that once you get a new place, make sure that you're installing cameras, but change your passcodes on anything that that person would have had access to. You can also put an alert on your social security number, right? So that this person doesn't have access to your information so that they cannot also abuse you in an economic way. Make sure that you have locks on everything. like. You'd be surprised the things that people do when relationships end. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, more than 40% of black women have experienced intimate partner physical violence, intimate partner sexual violence, or intimate partner stalking in their lifetimes. And more than half of black adult female homicides are related to intimate partner violence. Like, y'all. This is getting crazy, okay? All right, now I wanna get into protection tips. One of the first things I wanna talk about is that when you notice that there's something strange about an individual, whether it's when you're dating them or by the time you're already in a relationship with them, you're married to them, you need to be open and share this with someone. Many of us get into situations and we're afraid to tell other people what we're going through and what's happening. I am here to tell you right now, share this with someone else because you do not want to be in isolation dealing with this situation. You can't get through it alone. Sometimes we think, oh, I, all I need is, no, 
In a situation like this, you are probably going to need some type of help. You might need some emotional support. You might need some physical support for when you need to leave or when you need to move. Or if you're just dating someone, you need some emotional support from your friends or your family just telling you that you can get through the situation or coming to sit with you at home if you may be scared at night when you're sleeping. But make sure that you open up and let someone else know what you're going through. You do not have to suffer alone. The other part of this, um, as it relates to protection, is that within your home, make sure that you have some things that are hidden away to protect yourself, that only you know where they are and you can access those things easily. Put them in places where you can boom, okay? If I know if something happens or at something escalates, I can easily grab this particular item. Now, I know that that may be difficult if you are in a marriage with someone and that's why it's just like, okay, absolutely, you need to leave. You know, like you can't, there's no fail-proof situation uh, that you can try to put together or a plan that you can put together. The only thing you can do is leave. And even after you leave, you still have to continuously protect yourself. But I definitely think it's good to have some items around the house in preparation if things go left. This one, whew, this one is important too. If the person that you're interacting with in an intimate situation knows where you work, like the physical location of your job, Think about um, getting switched to a different department. If that person knows the layout of your office. Um, also think about letting the security at your job know or other people at your job know that you don't want that person there, right? Because sometimes because we've kept things so secret, when people pop up, folks don't know what's going on. So. Tim pops up at work and everybody's like, oh, this is so nice. He just came to, you know, see Angela. Oh, her boyfriend is so sweet. Not knowing that Tim is packing. Tim is ready to take out the whole floor, okay? So make sure that you're letting people know that like, hey, you know, like not saying anything necessarily too much detail or giving people too much detail about your life because I know we try to keep our personal lives private at work. But if you're dealing with someone and you're nervous about them, absolutely you need to tell someone at work. You need to have someone walking you to and from your vehicle when you're going, when you're coming to work and when you're leaving work um, just for that added security. Okay, so now I wanna go over some specific tips for when you are just initially meeting someone. Just some things that we need to add to our routine to ensure safety. So the first one is that whenever you are going out on dates, you should always be sending your location to someone. And if you have an Android phone, um, a lot of Android phones now, you should be able to press that like plus button when you're in your messenger, and then there's a location button and share your location as well. Cause you know iPhone users try to hate on us, but it's all right because my Android it does it all okay <laughs> no shade there by the way the other thing is if you're not able to share your location then you can go into Google Maps and there's a way that you can connect someone to your Google Maps and send your location to them that way but always letting people know when you're going on dates who you're going on the date with. Someone should have their first name and their last name. If you can get a picture of their license plate or their driver's license, that's just an added layer of safety. The other thing is that when we're going out on these dates, uh, sis, don't drink too much. <laughs> I know you're having fun. I know he's talking that good talk. I know he's handsome and he smells good, but we cannot let our guard down too much. So be really careful about the amount of drinks. So some things to carry in terms of safety. Definitely get some pepper spray to carry with you. Uh, you can get this from like any, uh, like, what are those like adventure outdoors? They have that in Atlanta or I think it's in Smyrna, but they sell a lot of, um, I don't know if I can say that in this video. That's why I'm not saying it, but they sell protection items. And so you want to find a place that sells that type of merchandise and go ahead and grab it. Like it's not even expensive and you'll feel so much better having that. Even when you're just like walking in your neighborhood, like I always have that with me, uh, you know, don't get caught slipping. So make sure that you have that as well. Also look into taking some self-defense courses, um, in your neighborhood or somewhere that's close to you just so that you know pain points and areas that you may be able to focus on if someone ever does try to like attack you. The other thing is that I really wanna 
talk about the fact that domestic violence, you know, we went over that definition and it really talks about all of the different layers of domestic violence and not focusing in on the physical elements of domestic violence because there's so much more to domestic violence. There's the psychological impact. Um, there's the health impact that happens, right? If someone is bringing STDs to you, I mean, there's just so many different ways that domestic violence can have um, negative repercussions in your life. So I think it's very important to remember that, to remember that relationships shouldn't be negative. Relationships shouldn't put you down. Relationships shouldn't make you sad. Um, relationships should be something that adds to the life that you already have. Just like you're adding to that person, they should also be adding to yourself. And so one of the things that I think is really important to focus on is self-love. When you love yourself, you just tolerate a whole lot less. Like I can honestly say that I'm at the point where I do really, really, really love myself and so that means that I love myself enough to be on my own I love myself enough to say even if I was married to someone I would have the capabilities of walking away from that marriage if it wasn't right for me because I'm not going to stay in any situation that doesn't benefit me I'm not going to stay in any situation that hurts me mentally physically I'm just not gonna allow it to happen. And so we just have to have the mindset that our self-love is so important and that that love should always come before another person. I wanna ask you all, what steps are you planning on to take next to ensure your safety when you are dating or in any type of relationship? What are you going to do to protect yourself? Let me know, let's get into the comments because there's probably things that I didn't mention. And so if you have a really, really good safety tip, please share it with us, okay? This is how we can all learn and grow. The National Domestic Hotline is open 24 seven. So do not hesitate to call them. Their number is 1-800-799-SAFE. Again, 1-800-799-SAFE. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Share this with somebody that you care about. If you know somebody that's in a situation or a circumstance and they don't know how they're gonna get out of it or they're contemplating back and forth, should I stay, should I go? Send this message to them, all right? We have to support each other, you all. We have to motivate each other and we have to be here and advocate for each other. And be blessed.